Hello everyone. This video would focus on determining whether or not a given table is an example of an inverse variation or not. Before we go further, please feel free to check out the description below for the link of the other series of topics related to inverse variation. Before we jump into this example we have right here, let's have a review on the basic information of inverse variation. So what is inverse variation? To better understand this type of variation, let's look at variable A and variable B. For inverse variation, if variable A increases, variable B will decrease. Now notice the direction of the arrow. The other one goes up while the other variable goes down. On the other hand, if variable A decreases, then variable B will increase. And again, notice the direction of the arrow. The direction of the arrow goes in opposite direction. And that is what we mean by inverse variation. So whenever we see two variables are inversely proportional with each other, we can say that A varies inversely as B or A is inversely proportional to B. Now let's look at some real life examples of inverse variation. Speed and time are inversely proportional to each other, which means that if a car moves at a faster speed, then it takes less time to get to its destination. On the other hand, if a car moves at a slower speed, then it takes more time to get to the same destination. And that makes speed and time inversely proportional to each other. Now let's look at another example. Number of trees and air pollution on a given area are inversely proportional to each other, which means that if the area has a greater number of trees or if it has more trees, then it has less pollution. On the other hand, if that same area has less number of trees, then it will have a more probability of getting air pollution. And so again, these two are inversely proportional to each other. Now let's look at another example. Practice and number of mistakes are inversely proportional to each other, which means that the more we practice, the less mistakes we commit. On the other hand, the less we practice, the more mistakes or we get more probability of committing mistakes if we have less practice. So these two are inversely proportional to each other. We also remember that the general equation for an inverse variation is y equals k over x, where our k is called the proportionality constant. So that we can go ahead and say that if we wanted to determine the constant of variation or the proportionality constant k for an inverse variation, we go ahead and we can rearrange this equation as k equals xy. <laughs> Okay, going back to the example right here, we are given a table of values right here and we're supposed to determine is this table an example of an inverse variation or not? In order that we can tell whether or not this is an inverse variation, we are going to determine the constant of proportionality or the proportionality constant for this table. Again, we remember that the proportionality constant for an inverse variation is x, y. So we are going to multiply the values of x and the values of y. So in this case right here, we are going to multiply 1 times 8. So that would be 1 times 8. That gives us 8. And then we have x, y. Remember, that's x, y. So that would be 2 times 4. That gives us 8. Then this one here would be 4 times 2. Then that gives us um, 8. 4 times 2 is 8, and then we also have here 8 times 1, so that's x, y, that gives us 8, and we have 16 times 1 half, so 16 times 1 half here, this comes out to be 16 uh, times 1 is 16, um, divided by 2, so that would be 8. So if you notice the value when we multiply the um, 
values of x and the values of y will always come out 8. So then we can go ahead and say that this is an example of an inverse variation since the constant or the proportionality constant k here is equal to 8. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Again, we remember that for an inverse variation, the product of x and y is a constant, and it's all 8 here. So this is an example of an inverse variation. Now let's move on to the next example. Again, in this example, we're given table of values, and we're supposed to determine if this table of value is an example of an inverse variation or not. So again, we are going to determine the proportionality constant k, which is actually equal to the product of x and y, and that is one way to test if the table is an example of an inverse variation or not. So what we mean by that is that we're going to multiply x times y, and if all the values, when we multiply these two numbers together, would equal to each other, then it is an example of an inverse variation. So in this case right here, we have 1 times 3 is 3. We have 2 times 6 is 12. And then we continue the rest of these. Okay, if you notice, the product of x and y is not the same. This tells us that this is not an example of an inverse variation. Because again, in order that a table is an example of an inverse variation, is that when we multiply x and y, it will give us the same number. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Okay, now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, in order that we can determine if this given table is an example of an inverse variation or not, we're supposed to solve for the proportionality constant k, which is equal to the product of x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this value of x and the value of y for each of these rows. Okay, so what I did here is that we have 3 times 2 thirds. We cancel out the 3 and 3. We're left with 2. Here we have 4 times 1 half. Half of 4 is 2. That's pretty much what it means. And then we have 5 times 2 fifths. We cross out the 5 and 5. We're left with 2. If you notice, the value of the product between x and y is the same for all of these. And that is 2. This tells us that this is an example of an inverse variation because the proportionality constant is equal to 2, or it's the same. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over this problem here again in order that we can determine if this given table is an inverse variation or an example of an inverse variation or not is that we need to determine the proportionality constant k and for inverse variation that is the product of x and y. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the value of x and y here. So that would be 1, that's the x, and the y is 1 third. So I'm going to go ahead and um, multiply these two and that would be equal to one third and I will do the same thing for the rest of these. Okay, if you notice the product between x and y will not be the same for all of these. And so this tells us that this is not an example of an inverse variation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Did you get the same answers as this? Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!